recorded. I um, welcome, so I'll do the official introduction. Welcome everyone to the Aperio Teaching and Learning Group, uh, Wednesday, September 9th, 2015. This is Neil Caden, uh, SCAD Community Coordinator with the Aperio Foundation, and uh, one of a couple of folks that, um, you know, lead these sessions and collect the agenda items and facilitate them. Um, so today's agenda, um, we have the Etherpad posted in the chat room, and uh, today's agenda we have, of course, usual welcome, meeting launch, so welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, we'll take some time for any project updates. Um, I think we might still be a little bit, I think we might have one or two project updates. Uh, and then we have our JIRA of the week. Uh, JIRA. And uh, then Wilma Hodges is going to do a UX uh, update, uh, which 15 to 20 minutes, possibly more. Uh, we have two items on the agenda today. The other one is harmonizing and improving terminology in Sakai. Uh, and that might be five or 10 minutes, so it may not take long, which might give uh, more uh, time for the UX testing updates. So we'll kind of play that by ear. And it is also possible that we might just do an initial conversation on this topic, which has a confluence page, and give people a chance to ruminate about it and some time on next agenda as well, so that uh, you have time to uh, have some thoughtful, dis thoughtful discourse. And then we'll discuss uh, future meeting themes and topics. I probably need to paste in um, the upcoming meetings and where we have some openings as well, and uh, and then wrap up and adjourn. So that's our. Uh, meeting for today. So we'll start with the project updates. Um, I actually have a project update. I think, uh, Wilma, you may have a project update on STEP. Um, and, uh, uh, and then we'll see if anyone else has anything to offer. So project update is, um, is something, uh, it's kind of new and kind of not new. It's the Morpheus project. We decided to run a skin contest. So Morpheus is the responsive design. And it's in our nightly server, which, uh, uh, and you're welcome to take a look at it. It looks really cool. And what's also good to look at is to see how it adjusts when you make the screen size small. So you could try it on your mobile phone and on your desktop, or you could just try it on your desktop and drag the screen small enough where it approximates the mobile device and you'll see how things change. And we have a really cool design already, but we decided it would be really fun to have a skin contest. So you may have seen initial announcement, we're creating some more details around it, uh, but the idea is to go crazy, go wild. Um, one of the things we're working on, the Morpheus folks are working on is some documentation so that um, it will help you to understand how you can make the changes to try out the skin. And we're planning on also having a presentation so we can kind of walk you through the documentation and, and help you in that way as well. And um, and the winner is going to be announced at the Sakai Virtual Conference on November 4th. And right now what I'm doing, what we're doing is we're recruiting uh, judges. We have two judges from the Sakai core team, our developers, and we have Wilma has uh, agreed to be on. The, uh, and we're looking for about two or three more, and it would be great to have, um, I don't know, Jolie, if you still think you can uh, recruit a student, that would be awesome. It'd be great to have a student on the, on the judging panel. It might be really cool to have an instructor uh, on the judging panel. And certainly um, folks like that are in this call would be great to have. So we're, we're going to limit the, um, the number of people on the judging panel probably to about six, I think. Uh, so we just need a few more. And if you have an interest, please, you know, please let me know. Um, so that's, that's my announcement. Yeah, students would be great, instructors would be great, or folks in this call I think would also be great, you know, technologists, designers, those types of folks I think would be super. So, um, so that's my announcement uh, on the project update. Um, are there any other project updates? Um, just real quick on the step update, um, we met with, um, with Steve Swimsberg, Flying Kite, uh, just to kind of get a progress update. Uh, I guess it was last week. And um, it looks like our four top items um, should make it into Sakai 11, so that's pretty cool. 
We're excited to see that those are, are nearing completion. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to preview some of those um, fairly soon. Um, but they should certainly be ready to, to demo um, in time for the virtual conference in November. So we're going to be having a session there and, uh, and we'll be able to actually demonstrate some of the, the new features that were added as a result of STEP. Thanks. Thanks for that update. Oh, and I and I need to go back to skin update. Just um, I forgot to mention that we've had some discussion in terms of how much time commitment it is, because that might be a really important consideration for people considering joining the judging panel. So we're we're estimating about five to ten hours of work uh, for the judging, and with the criteria for um, for for the uh, best submissions and uh, then doing the actual judging and looking at the different uh, options. So it should be fun. It shouldn't be too nervous to work. And it's not going to be like a five, 10, 10 hours all in one chunk. It'll be, uh, you know, spread out over some, over several weeks. Um, any other project announcements? Uh, this is uh, Louisa about the LEAP. Um, the working group is going to have a meeting this week, uh, Friday. After that, I think I have more updates to report to the community. Cool. Thank you. Um, see more. Uh, see go. Issues will be fixed. All right. Any any other uh, announcements or project updates? Is there anything about farm? Well, um, I don't have anything about farm, uh, but I can I can speak to it a little bit. Uh, we do have a group. Uh, we haven't even really um, uh, broadcast the, the name farm a lot, but we have announced it a little bit here and there, like mentioned at the Perio conference. Uh, we did an announcement about this effort. I think we are pretty well set on calling it farm which is uh, the funding and resource model of Sakai. Um, so you'll be hearing more about that in, in the near future. Uh, it's basically the idea is that we already have like all these different projects that community that, that come from grassroots within the community, like the Samago test and quizzes a step one, like the lessons enhancement one, like the grade book one, accessibility. So we have all these different projects going on in the community that are happening naturally, and we just want to make it um, uh, for the broader community and uh, make it easier for people to understand how to kind of start their own projects. Um, so that's something we'll, you'll be hearing more about in the near future. Any other questions or updates? Oh, um, I forgot. So it's about the Twisia community? Uh, the Twitter committee is grouping to have the first meeting in a week. Uh, we are trying to uh, set up a time. Um, but again, just like usual, we uh, always look for new judges uh, to refresh the pool. So if you know still some, someone who is interested, send me an email. I will send a doodle out so we set up a time. Um, th this might involve a lot more work than judging the Mafia scheme, so <laughs> um, I will send a detailed email about the judges' uh, responsibility and roles. Yeah, but are we constantly looking for new judges. Cool, thanks. Any other project updates or questions about the status of things? Oh, I see there was some chatting I missed. Let's see. Cool. Thanks, Jolie. I, I see that. That's awesome. Uh, probably one, one student judge will be sufficient, I think. Um, maybe two would be OK. Let's see. Is there a confluence page with uh, details on STEP? And Wilma uh, included that. So why don't we copy and paste that also? I'll do that and put it in the notes. So people can look at the step uh, issues, there. and I think that catches us up on the uh, chat. So let's go ahead and uh, if there's no more else, uh, nothing else for now, we'll go on move to the Jira of the week. 
Um, I don't remember who submitted this, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. It's Samago 2043. <clears throat> Everyone should be able to see it. Uh, it's titled Provide Control Over When Scores Are Sent to the Gradebook. Um, so take a minute or two. I'll read it out loud for the purpose of the um, recording. I'll read out the descriptions to so take a minute or two and, and read through it and think about it. And there's also a comment on it. So it says description. We have a fact quest for greater control of gradebook integration, i.e. the ability to choose when scores for an assessment are sent to gradebook. A similar request has been made previously in the following unresolved tickets. So it lists a couple of um, additional JIRA tickets. Currently, grades are sent immediately regardless of feedback setting. So a student sees an assessment score in gradebook even if the assessment requires manual grading that has not yet been done by the instructor. One approach might be to adopt the assignments functionality, I guess the assignment tool functionality if possible tool if you opt to send an assignment's scores to the gradebook, a gradebook item gets created immediately, but a score is not sent until the instructor releases it to the student. Perhaps the gradebook integration could honor an assessment's feedback settings. Or, as suggested in, and it mentions another ticket, SAK 6288, a release scores to gradebook button could be added. So I don't know if anyone on this call was the one who suggested this particular ticket. If so, it would be great to have you jump in and give a little bit more um, background. If not, I'll just give everyone a, a couple minutes to read through and think about it a little and uh, see if there's any comments. Oh, hey, sorry, can, so already can you hear me? There are some comments. Neil, can you hear me? This is Laura from Notre Dame. Yep, sure can. Um, yeah, we are actually trying to champion this ticket right now. Um, we have a group specifically this semester who's kind of handling their class differently. We've created like 108 sections of a first year of studies class, and we've created it so that it's almost turnkey for all of the advisors and instructors who are using it. So we've kind of shut up, shut off a lot of extra uh, things that instructors can do, and we've limited what they can do in the gradebook. So they can't hide items in the gradebook until they're ready to release, you know, show the scores to students. So what we're finding is, as the students are completing um, assignments in the tests and quizzes tool, as soon as they electronically hand it in, and these are short answer, sort of questions. Um, test and quizzes tool immediately sends a big fat zero to the grade book. And these are first year very aggressive students and they're seeing zeros in their grade book, which of course they read as a fail and they're panicking. And it really called attention um, for us to something that we think may have changed with the upgrade to Sakai 10. Um, nobody remembers this kind of widespread response, getting a bunch of zeros showing up in the grade book as students do these quizzes that have to be manually graded. So we don't know if this just sort of, because so many students are doing it all at once that it's been you know, brought to our attention or if this is kind of new for Sakai 10, but does that clarify what the, what the problem is? That, that does clarify it for me. And um, one thing I'd say is if we can verify that it worked uh, one way in Sakai 2.9 and then it doesn't work that way in Sakai 10, we might be able to, instead of making this as a feature request, it might be considered a blocker level bug, um, or at least a critical level. I think if there's somebody who has Sakai 2.9 and you can see how it behaves in that version of Sakai, that would be you know really um, helpful to know because there is a big difference between making a feature request in Sakai and making, uh, you know, and, and reporting a bug. Um, I see some other things in the chat, so let's just make sure we're caught up with the chat discussion. Um, let's see. Obviously, Laura, you just uh, made the case for Notre Dame. Um, so it looks like Dave says that he has the same issue uh, at Johnson University, and um, they think that the students think they're not doing well. They try to front load, inform them of the grading process, but they don't seem to read that part. And Jennifer Ludiana says um, they have instructors who mentioned that one minute that one administering the test. So it sounds like other people also are uh, experiencing the same issue. Does anyone else have uh, comments either for the chat or for um, just kind of chiming in with their audio?
Yeah, and Dave, so, that's, what, that's what we're asking the instructors to do is, you know, basically communicate with your students. Tell them, I will be grading week two submissions this weekend. So if you see a zero, it means that your, your quiz has been submitted. But um, wait until I get it scored this weekend to really start reading this. I'll have additional comments in the test and quizzes tool so that you'll know if you did get a zero, if you did earn a zero, why. So, yeah, they definitely need to communicate with students. But it kind of opened our eyes to the fact that this is probably not a preferable function <laughs> function of the quiz test and quizzes tool. It really shouldn't be sending those zeros over until something has actually been graded. It does look like active version, so not everyone may be aware of what all the fields in JIRA mean, but we have something called effects versions. And the intention there is to say what versions of Sakai have, you know, need this update or have this problem. And based on what's in there, it sounds like this has been how Sakai has behaved for a long time. Uh, that doesn't mean it shouldn't be fixed. It's just it's a little bit different than it does mean it's more of a feature change than a, than a bug fix is what it sounds like. This is an FYI. We noticed that Jim had submitted something about this a few years yeah. ago. So that's good. Yeah. And so then this comes back to another discussion, which I don't know if we have time to discuss now, but it just, it just reminds me, we didn't put this on the agenda, maybe it's an agenda for next week, is one of the things we did want to talk about is how to go from, uh, you know, get a consensus, for example, in the community, how do we go from there to actually having this um, happen, actually getting this um, issue addressed? Because there isn't necessarily a clear path to that unless, for example, Notre Dame was saying, okay, it looks like the community wants that and, and you know, you make the, uh, have developers and you do the development or hire. I lost audio. I think I'm back now. So anyway, that was a discussion we were planning on having um, at some point, but maybe not right this second. So, uh, so people, if you have if you have a comment on this, I encourage you to log in to Jira and put a comment in from your institution, from yourself. And uh, I don't think you heard me either. I, I lose audio about once a time, and I I need to report that to the big blue button folks, the uh, Blindside Networks. It happens to me in Firefox, but I always use Firefox in case I need to do screen sharing because uh, Chrome doesn't support screen sharing currently with the uh, big blue button. So, um, sorry about that. So, any other comments on, on this issue? Okay, well, it sounds like from the, folk, the folks who did chime in on the call, there is um, significant uh, interest in maybe having it behave differently, so then that might just be figuring out what's what's the next step on this. And again, I encourage you to go ahead and comment on the Jira uh, to let you know to indicate that your institution does have an interest. That that's a that's one helpful step. Um, so moving on to the next thing, I think we are now at uh, let's see UX testing update. Performa. Um, can you give me screen share privileges, please? Absolutely. Let's see. All right. Done. Okay. Hopefully this works. I'm in Firefox, so. Are you guys seeing it yet? Not yet. Hmm. Okay, I just got the little Java pop up. There we go. There we go. All right. So, Just to kind of give you a, um, a brief overview of the, um, the UX group or the user experience group, um, and Louisa Lee is going to also be helping me out with some of the um, 
points we'll be talking about. So we've recently kind of reformed. I mean, this isn't a brand new group. It's one that um, sort of existed in the past and um, hadn't been meeting on a regular basis because when I actually went to create a page in Confluence, I found there was already a page <laughs> with a lot of stuff in there um, from previous discussions and things. A lot of that went into OAE, um, but it had been sort of um, not meeting on a regular basis. So we decided to kind of restart that process again. There seemed to be a, quite a bit of interest in the community on um, looking at these kinds of user experience questions. And so sort of the, the purpose of the group is to conduct research on design and development to shape the overall experience for Sakai. Um, we want it to be something that's you know user friendly and to have a lot of feedback from end users so that the overall product is something that um, is pleasing uh, for folks. So there is a, a Confluence page that um, I've recently updated with some of the um, more recent edition here and we do have um, monthly meetings where we've settled on the first Monday of the month at 11 um, but this month uh, the first Monday was Labor Day so we actually changed it so our next meeting is coming up next Monday on the 14th at 11 a.m. Eastern so if you're interested please join us we do use um, big blue button and it's room three so um, you're welcome to to join us for our next meeting and we've got the minute from the last couple meetings posted um, so we'll be posting those minutes again as they um, are developed each week we um, are using etherpad for for notes so um, I've also got some information here and some recent work that was conducted either uh, prior just prior to the group sort of reforming or um, you know, as a result of uh, the UX working group. So you're welcome to delve down into that a little bit more. We don't have a, um, a separate email address, but we are posting periodic updates to both the Sakai user and the Sakai dev lists. So um, if we find that it might be useful to have our dedicated um, email address, we can revisit that. That was something we kind of kicked around a little bit in some of the early meetings, whether or not we needed to have an email address. Um, but for now, we're just posting to those two listservs. So if you belong to one of those lists already, you should be getting our periodic you know, announcements and updates. Um, so let me return to slideshow here. So just real briefly, I mean, I, I think probably most people on this call are familiar with, um, you know, what usability is, but I just kind of wanted to, to mention some of the key aspects of it just to set the tone a little bit for what we're trying to accomplish as a UX working group. Um, so Jacob Nielsen um, defines it as an equality attribute that is has to do with how, how easy the interface is for users um, and it looks at five components there and really those are, are five things that we want to hopefully um, you know improve or enhance in Sakai as we um, you know, go through the development process. So we want it to be easy for users to learn how to use the tool. So the first time they see an interface, we want it to be intuitive for them. We want them to be able to find their way around easily without a lot of stumbling. Um, we want it to be efficient so that people can efficiently find things, perform tasks. They're not wasting a lot of time, you know, clicking down into the interface, searching for things. Uh, we want it to be memorable so that people kind of remember, oh, you know, that makes sense. That's where that you know, functionality is. So they're not having to go in and relearn it every time they go back to it after having kind of a distance from using it. And um, in terms of errors, we want to really minimize those. And if there is, you know, opportunity for user error, we want to make it easy to recover from that. We don't want to have, you know, some error that student, students or faculty perform and then it's like impossible to undo that. Um, so we want to make it easy for folks to recover from any errors that they might um, make in the interface. And then again, satisfaction is a big component to that. We want it to be pleasant. We want it to be attractive, something that, um, that people want to use. Um, so all those are kind of key usability um, components, but we want, really want to try to work those in um, to Sakai. And a big part of that is um, you know, eliciting user feedback and getting that feedback back to the developers. And that's kind of where the UX group sits, is sort of that middle ground in between the end users and the developers to try to make communication between those two groups a little bit more um, 
effective so that uh, the developers know what end users are looking for and end users are, are able to communicate those needs a little bit more efficiently to the folks that are actually designing the code. So some of the research that we've done, um, and this kind of started um, back last November at the, um, the first virtual conference, is we actually did some UX testing. We did remote um, live testing during the conference. And uh, we have some information on that on once actually. And there's a couple of videos here that were recorded, actually. One is sort of an orientation. A, a, um, for the usability observers that we had at the beginning of the day to kind of, if, if somebody had never observed a test before, this is what's expected of you sort of thing. And then we have also the discussion of the results. So at the end of the day, after all the tests were completed, the folks that were observing just kind of got together for a few minutes and talked about the things that they uncovered. Because usually um, with usability testing, you don't need to test a large number of people because usually after about five or six people you start to see trends so um, the idea is to make it very iterative so you, you, you do some testing you see some trends you go back you make adjustments you test again and you you know refine the process um, through that uh, sort of recursive method so um, so there's some more information there if you're interested um, we also did some live UX texting at the um, at the Open Imperio conference in Baltimore. We actually did in-person testing there. Um, and if you're interested, you can look at the test script. Interestingly enough, the test script was actually the same test script that we had used at the virtual conference. But for the virtual conference, we used the test script with um, Sakai 2.9. And um, or I'm sorry, it might have been Sakai 10. Um, and then for the Open Aperio, we actually used um, what was then um, Sakai 11. It's, it looks a little different now, but we used the, the newest um, version to test against. So it's the same script, but we uncovered um, different things based on which version people were looking at. And we actually... Um, made some suggestions for changes to the interface based on the testing. So if you're interested, again, you can read through this. I'm not going to belabor the point if you've already seen it. But um, a lot of the suggestions that we made about some tweaks to uh, Morpheus were based on some issues that we uncovered during the testing. So um, I will let uh, Louisa talk a little bit about Leap. If I don't know if you need screen share, Louisa, you want me to just pull up um, the page here? Uh, you can just pull out the page. Um, okay. You want to finish your part, then I can continue. Okay, sure. Um, so I'll skip down to the Samago part. And uh, we also did, and this wasn't um, formal UX testing, meaning that we didn't have, you know, a formal script and have users walk through a set of tasks, which is what you typically do, um, because we were trying to do this kind of in the summer, you know, it was like end of July, beginning of August, and it was impossible to find people that would, you know, schedule a time <laughs> to do some testing. So, um, but University of Dayton had developed this feature um, of a side panel, and you may have seen some of the, the emails about this on the list. Um, and they wanted a little bit of user feedback on the interface. So what we ended up doing, um, because it was a little bit easier to coordinate, is we put a, a survey out just to get some feedback from folks. Um, they did kind of a screen capture video, which is here if you want to watch it, that just sort of demonstrates what the feature looks like. And then we had folks fill out um, a few questions just to kind of get their overall feedback. And this is summarized here. Um, you can also go and look at a more detailed summary from the, the, um, the, the form that we did so you can see how folks answered to those individual questions. But um, that was just another way, while it wasn't a formal testing, it was another way to get feedback. So there's really a lot of different ways. There's no one right or wrong way to get user feedback. You can do a survey, you can do a focus group, you can do um, formal testing like we did. So there's a, a really a variety of ways to do that. But the key aspect of there is just to get feedback from end users. Um, so uh, that really makes it valuable for, um, for developers as they're tweaking things, they kind of know where to focus their efforts. So um, now I'll turn it over to Louisa. Thank you, Wilma.
Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we will. Uh, I will talk about the work that we uh, have done in the LEAP project, uh, which is the uh, um, lessons enhancement project. Um, so over the summer, we did a UX testing on the uh, interface uh, enhancement. So if you could click on the summary of results. Yes, thank you. Um, so we uh, the purpose is to um, uh, try out the lessons wireframe pr provided by Express Labs, and also um, Chuck Hedrick added a new feature, which is uh, a combine and separate of the blocks uh, on the lessons page. Uh, there is a icon on the left, so we just kind of call it left icon design. It's a new functionality. Uh, so we conducted the uh, testing just like many other UX testing. Um, we run the script through several of the testes and we recorded videos and then we analyzed those. Uh, eventually we provided some feedback to the developers and uh, see what they are doing. Uh, how they are thinking about the wireframe and also the left icon design. Um, pretty interesting. Uh, as Wilma described earlier, you know, if you see the results from several people under five, you can see the trends. Uh, very interesting detail here. So for that icon on the left, uh, we have different designs. And um, after seeing a result from several people, we immediately observed nobody's getting the icon. <laughs> so obviously the icon doesn't work. Um, that's one of the small details uh, in this um, uh, testing. Um, so we made the suggestions and Chuck is making changes based on those uh, recommendations. So that's one of them. Uh, and also after many uh, discussions in the community, Chuck decided to add a new functionality, which is the multi-column uh, design. Uh, so to help him develop this new feature, uh, we worked on a user case. Um, well, it's not exactly UX testing. Uh, it's kind of uh, design ideas. Uh, to provide user cases, how people want to use this multi-column design. Uh, thank you, Wilma. Um, so several of us from the working group got together. Uh, we uh, put together these slides to provide uh, screenshots of or mock-ups of things that we think we would do. Um, pretty interesting. You can see many different designs here. Uh, how people use different things. We also, upon request from Chuck, we also consider how you want the page to look like on a mobile device. Uh, after several rounds of discussion, uh, Chuck took the advice and he made the multi-column design possible in lessons pages. It's in Sakai 11 trunk right now. Um, the working group is going to discuss this in the next meeting, which is coming up a Friday. Um, we hope that uh, we could uh, uh, run next round of UX testing. Uh, we don't know yet, but I think we will. And then possibly we need to recruit more people to test this out. And also, of course, doing QA. Yep, that's a very quick walkthrough of these two things we did in Leap. Thank you. Thanks, Louisa. Yeah, that was um, really awesome that we were able to uh, to get the multi-column thing. And um, I know that was something that was originally out of scope. We didn't think that that was something that would be able to, to make it into Sakai 11. So it's pretty exciting to see that come out of some of those UX discussions and um, actually make it into uh, the next version. So pretty cool. Um, Another thing that I did want to mention is that we will be doing some more UX testing at the virtual conference, and we need some volunteers. We need people to volunteer for all sorts of different things. So if you're interested in helping create the test scripts, if there's a, a particular feature that you're interested in, in testing, 
um, that you want to propose. We're still, we haven't developed the script yet, so, um, so that's still kind of up in the air if you're interested in doing that. If you just want to maybe facilitate a test, um, you don't necessarily feel comfortable developing a script or you don't have any ideas for a script, but you can uh, walk someone through it, we will need some folks to administer the tests during the um, conference. And we also need people to observe and take notes. And, um, you know, as many observers as we can get is great, because usually if you have, you know, more than, uh, more than one person observing a test, people will pick up on different things. So it's great to have multiple observers uh, per session if possible. And then we'll also need some end users. So, and this could be people at any level. Um, they don't need to be technical experts. In, in fact, in, in a lot of cases, it's better if they're not um, intimately familiar with Sakai. That way you get sort of that first impression from a user that's maybe not not as familiar using the tools. So um, if you are interested in, in being part of the testing as an end user, um, or if you know people or even students, we'd love to get student input. Um, so, you know, think about all those things. We'll be putting out some announcements and things for folks to sign up um, for appointments. There'll be a, a number of slots to sign up for for um, the testing appointments during the, the day of the conference. So be on the lookout for those. And if you are interested in helping out, uh, please email me. You can email me at wilma at longsite.com. I'll um, type it into the chat if you're interested. Uh, please do get in touch. And then we just have questions if anybody has any. Hmm. Thank you, Julian. Um, you just sort of volunteered. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a comment about the volunteers. Um, so we need uh, uh, two, uh, actually three type of people, uh, the participants who are the testees and also the observers, right? And mm -hmm. also the uh, testers like me and uh, Wilma and we will uh, run the test. Uh, three different kinds of people, and every type of Sakai users are uh, welcome. And yep. it's pr pretty interesting. Last time we had a lot of uh, very experienced Sakai users as these uh, participants, and even the very experienced Sakai user cannot figure out some of the features. Uh, it's pretty interesting <laughs> to see how different people react to the Sakai 11 system. So we definitely welcome everybody. All right, just a word. Thank you, Julie. So no questions from anyone? Thanks, Terry. Terry says she's willing to help where we need it. And you can round up some faculty for us. Awesome. All right, well, um, remember that our next meeting is next Monday at 11. So if any of you are interested in, in uh, sitting in on some of our meetings, you're certainly welcome. We don't have to attend all of them. You can you know, come and go as you please, but, uh, but we do meet once a month and we welcome everyone. Sure, I can put a link to the presentation in the Etherpad. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Wilma and Louisa. That was a great presentation. Nice to get some volunteers going um, and participating. Uh, the next topic is uh, harmonizing and improving uh, terminology in Sakai. Um, and there may be some opportunities that likely to even do this for Sakai 11. Um, so there's a link to a Confluence page there. and. Uh, Maybe we can just take a few minutes to take a look at it and have some initial discussion and then see if this is something we want to, uh, you know, dig into a little bit right now or even possibly come back to maybe next week. So, uh, I, you know, Adam and Wilma are both on. I think you both had some ideas of this. So if either of you want to kind of chime in and talk about this a little bit, that'd be great. Uh, I was waiting for Adam. Adam? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I was waiting for people to have a couple of minutes to read the page. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, let me start. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so. Hold on a minute. That's great to give him a minute. Um, Go ahead. Uh, okay, well, uh, if we went through the, the page kind of slowly, then people would get a chance to catch up. So the, the whole idea was, um, yeah, there's, you know, a minor annoyance, really, um, which we've all got used to, in that things are referred to using different names or perhaps confusing names and so on. So it, all this sort of thing, all this changing of words on the screen is, is fairly easy to do, really. It doesn't need, need much thought. And actually, it doesn't really need to be done by a developer, although struggling with Git is a little complicated. So perhaps it does. But I tried to make a start on the wiki page to, um, to sort of detail some of the things we could change. And it is by no means complete. Uh, it's just basically a start. Um, so, I mean, one good thing to come out of all this would be for people to suggest more things that should go on there um, with more solutions rather than us, you know, doing anything else. Um, having said that, though, um, we could kind of run through um, perhaps quickly what's on the page and then perhaps return to things because I know everyone's going to want to talk about site info, but there might be other things as well. So, um, so looking at the wiki page, then the first um, item I think is probably not really going to happen. Um, we had a bit of an issue with calling joinable, calling groups you could join um, joinable sets, because nobody knew what a set was. But uh, in Sakai 11, uh, I think it's pretty obvious what's going on. Um, right in the middle of site info page, there's a link which says groups I can join. And you click on that link as a student, and then you get a list of groups you can join. So the students don't really see the joinable set business. Um, so our proposals were kind of knocked back at the code review stage, and I don't think we're that bothered about it. Um, so the next thing was um, was due dates, um, but we've kind of on the wiki page, we've kind of got a mixture of sort of, you know, end, start and end dates, due dates, accept until dates. And I think there is room for uh, harmonization here, but we certainly can't change every single sort of finish date to due date or, you know, a single terminology, a single term. I think there's a small set of terms we need, and I think we've probably got more words uh, than we should have, so we should do a bit of consolidation there. And to say there's a few comments on the page um, there. Um, saving, there's also things, uh, you know, you, you get different buttons to save depending on the tools. Might be update, might be save, might be upload, might be post, might be finish. So again, um, I think we, what we need to do is go through individual tools and say when things should be changed and what they should be changed to. Uh, so what's in the wiki is just a general um, call really for people to go through and, and enumerate which changes we should, we should make. Sometimes you do want to post, uh, but sometimes save it could be replaced by finish or, or vice versa. Um, do, do we want to pause here for a little discussion or shall I just carry on? Uh, I've got a quick question. Where is that joinable set? in Sakai, because what <laughs> we have is a joinable site. No, no, it's hidden away, I think, in Sakai 10, if I remember rightly. Uh, okay. if, you go, if you go into um, uh, Manage Groups, is it? And then I think at the top of that page, there is something like Create Joinable Set. I, I can't quite remember what the students say, but I'm pretty sure that those students would never come across it unless they were told specifically to go there. Okay. Um, so, but but as I say, things seem to have been vastly improved in Sakai uh, 11. I, I, you know, I can't quite remember how it is in Sakai 10. Uh, it's in uh, the manage groups? It could well, yeah, I think, it, certainly it is to set it up, it's in there. I'm not 100% sure okay. how, how students find the group to join, actually. Uh, uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, mm, so yeah, we yeah. use 2.9, so cannot comment oh, right. on that, sorry. Yes, no, <laughs> you haven't got that, no. <laughs> okay. Okay, Thank was, you. was there, was there anything else on joinable sets, due dates, and saving? Or shall I, shall I carry on? Yeah. Okay. I'll I take that. To, oh. I just want to mention a thing about uh, just one minor point, which is uh, that we need to make sure to like tag these tickets. I think internationalization and make sure that um, the internationalization group is aware of them, so that when terms change, they can also remember to do the uh, translations. Okay. Well, at the moment, there aren't really many tickets because we haven't really said what we want to do. We've just said, you know, we should do something. So I figured that it didn't make much sense to create a ticket until we've actually said what we want to do because um, you're just saying, oh, we need to change this to something, which <laughs> doesn't really help anyone doing it. 
So, so I was hoping the first uh, stage would be for us to, to, to do some fairly detailed work in saying this tool changed this level to this word kind of thing. Um, and and there, actually, um, there might be um, pointers from um, Spanish translations, for example, because I know I mentioned some of this to um, the Spanish people and they said, oh, no, we changed that years ago. It was really confusing, wasn't it? So uh, other languages have done some work in this area and, you know, us Brits and Americans haven't. Well, as long as we're talking about the detail of that kind of thing, what I've this is Terry Golightly. I've sometimes Hi. been irritated by redundant clicking, just too many clicks to get through, for instance, the add participants process. That yeah. last finish click is that's I, I get annoyed by some of the littlest things, but I think that needs to be looked at too. I would say that was probably a separate thing, but yeah, I totally agree we should look at it yeah uh, I think you know what we're talking about here really is just changing words on a page which is which is I say very easy but changing stuff in the Java code is I mean it could be quite easy to do what you want but uh, also it is it does mean programming it does mean a developer and there might be certain implications and so on so it sounds to me like a, a very worthwhile initiative a streamlining I mean it's more sort of user experience really isn't it rather than um, harmonizing technology uh, terminology Uh, so, I, I, I will continue, if I may. <laughs> um, so, um, there's one uh, email notifications. I can't remember where that came from. I didn't actually think that was one of mine. But um, uh, we need to look at, because certain tools send messages from either, you know, post, well, I, it might be different to other institutions, but today I was, sometimes they come from Postmaster, sometimes they come from no reply, sometimes they come from the person who has just clicked the button. Um, and there's a variety of sort of sourced sources for system generated e emails and also there's a variety of kind of subject lines that you have you know, it doesn't always say Sakai in the subject line as to where it's from or so I think again there uh, we could do a job of enumerating each tool and then what messages it sends and then can we uh, you know try and do something a bit more coherent so that most of the messages come from you know, postmaster at Sakai or something, or most come from no reply, or, you know, basically uh, try and tighten things up a bit. Um, another one, uh, fairly simple, um, uh, uh, is um, when you delete uh, multiple items, there's all sorts of things which say remove ticked or update or remove selected, and there's a whole variety of different ways of saying, you know, get rid of all the ones I've selected. So again, um, it would be um, go through each tool uh, and say in this tool change remove uh, ticked to remove selected or something like that. And then once we've got all the different um, changing wordings done, it's only going to be an hour or two for a developer uh, to actually go through and change these things in the in the string files. So I wonder whether I should uh, maybe I should write something at the top of the wiki page which explains. What, what we need to make the wiki page complete. Let me just make a note of that. Um, okay. So we have oh, done the delete multiple um, items. Um, yeah, that's it also. Um, and, and this is a little more programming and a bit more user experience in that sometimes you're asked uh, for confirmation before you delete everything uh, that you've selected with no possibility of being able to get it back, which I think is very good. So maybe this page isn't the right place for it, but it would be useful to know which tools let you delete things um, without saying, have you accidentally just deleted everything? Uh, <laughs> are you sure you want to do this? Um, which is uh, you know, uh, very, very frustrating when you can't get them back. Um, so that's another one. Uh, maybe I should again put on uh, that it's more of a user experience rather than terminology. Um, so I'll do that. There are um, different terminology for reordering things. You know, you've got reorder, reorganize, organize, um, no label, all sorts of things. So it'd be good just to use the same word each time. Um, and then there's a similar one to the sort of save, which is when you've finished doing something like, for example, adding users to a site or uh, a, an announcement. Uh, there's all sorts of different things to say. It's kind of similar, isn't it? This finish, save, update, you know, and so on and so forth. So, 
for things that are uh, are similar, like you've done a whole process and then you've finished or you've saved it, they, we should use a single word because you just just looks a bit more professional. Um, okay, so that was it for um, for the kind of wording on the screen, and then there's three, uh, four, five kind of two ones. Shall we just see if there's any comments on um, the, the sort of labels on screen first before we move on to the tools? Anyone got anything to say? Is that a no? <laughs> uh, yeah, I see. Yeah, someone made a comment. T Terry's made a comment about um, you know doing everything through drag and drop rather than changing a number and so on and so forth. Uh, that's that would be brilliant, wouldn't it? I think it's slightly complicated by the fact that everyone uses different page templating languages. Uh, so drag and drop might be easier with JSF than it is with Wicked. But, but yeah, I think that would be a good goal. That, that's more of a user experience thing, isn't it? Um, I mean, in this day and age, really, we should always be doing drag and drop reordering, really. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't quite know how it all works on the tablet, but uh, <laughs> um, we'll see. So um, unless anyone starts shouting, um, Shall I um, go on to the tool names then? Um, and I'm going to start at the bottom because I know we're all going to talk about site info and that's the top one. <laughs> so the first comment, um, or the last, depending on how you look at it, is um, Alan Regan, Reagan saying, um, why do you change edit tools to add remove tools? Now, I think that's a fantastic idea and quite simple. So, um, I mean, I don't know. Does anybody want to uh, say that's not desired or um, this, this does, does lead into um, a, a point of how we get consensus um, as well so I mean we can talk here but we have to take it outside of this group I think and get general consensus from the community so uh, we, we do need a process yes I do. so I mean is, is everybody uh, by their silence saying that keeping uh, changing edit tools to add remove tools is a good idea or Okay, I, I take it that they are. <laughs> um, another one that Alan raised um, was that there's a button in Site Info saying page order. Now, whenever I talk about this at Oxford, I always say the appallingly named page order tool, because it is. I mean, it does, it, no one knows what a page is. Everyone thinks those things down the left are tools. And it also allows you to hide things. It allows you to um, uh, change the names of things. It does so much more than a page order. So we. We could come up with a much better idea, a much better name, I think. Um, and doing it before Sakai 11 is um, is quite desirable because otherwise um, there's a you know two-year kind of period before anyone actually gets it live on their desktop from from now. So. Um, hey Adam, I just in a meeting, and we usually like a few minutes to. Oh, sorry, I was watching the time. Well, maybe we should re return to this some other time then. Yeah. Yeah, can we do it next? Can we continue the conversation next week? Did that work for you? Uh, just let me check my diary. I think so. If not next week, the week after will be fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. no, no, next week's good. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Cool. So more, than, more than happy. Okay. We can, we can talk a bit more about the specifics, and we could also talk about you know how the process. Also, see that up uh, several places. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's really you know, um, I think it's really interesting. Also, the whole consensus thing. I'm getting a little bit. Just from my experience, a little concerned about the lazy consensus idea that if nobody talks, that means everybody agrees. <laughs> um, I would love us to be a little more maybe explicit and, and see if we're willing to try, you know, kind of doing a little round robin stuff or maybe we say, hey, I'm not sure at the moment or I'm kind of torn about it. So we kind of know where people are um, because I'm not sure, you know, I guess we give a better sense if we're really heading towards consensus or the silence is more people aren't quite sure yet. I'd really enjoy knowing that. I think it could be helpful. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I see that you yes. know, um, you know uh, while I was talking, you just changed schedule the calendar. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did that a couple of days ago, uh, sort of in Oxford. And if it all uh, test passes the test, then we'll contribute it back because there was consensus on the lists about that one. Cool, cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. And so I see that there's different comments. I'm really glad we kicked off the discussion today. It's getting people thinking. And we'll get into a little bit more again about the process next week and uh, a couple more of these issues. So thank you, Adam. Yeah, no problem.
Um, so we have about five minutes left, and what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about upcoming meetings. Um, I'm presenting next week on Lessons QA testing script development, which I have done uh, very little on, but that's why I need help, and I'll kind of talk about what the process is and why we need that, and, and generally a little bit about QA, a little QA overview, and we'll make sure to um, put this item on the agenda as well, the harmonizing, so that will be the other topic. And then we have uh, Jolie on the 23rd, the week after, talking about Warpwire, which I believe is a, a media solution. And uh, then we have still openings for September 30th, and we've got a number of openings in October as well. Um, a few of us uh, had gotten together and talked about NAVE outreach uh, to some of the other Perio projects. So we've already heard from like Xerti and we've heard from OpenCast, but uh, wondering if maybe this group would be just interested in hearing about any Aperio project. There's a lot of them out there. It might be, and since we are an Aperio group, we're still, it seems like, heavily Sakai focused based on the discussion, but maybe it would be good for, you know, for example, I could out, uh, do outreach to the cast. Others. Talk to you later. Uh, um, uh, oh, that sounds good. Um, and so that's kind of one idea that we had. There was um, maybe one or two other ideas. So looking for ideas for what you want to talk about. The other thing um, we're wondering, the group that you know, me and, and Tricia and Matt, because we kind of uh, have been keeping these meetings going for now, um, the teaching and learning meetings, is uh, thinking about whether we want to focus, if it would be practical to focus on user on like um, instructor issues, so rather than or pedagogical issues or teaching and learning issues, so rather than coming at it from a tool perspective, coming at it more from that perspective and then talking about different ways people maybe have used Sakai or maybe use other tools uh, to solve those problems. So those were a couple of ideas we were thinking about to maybe help, uh, you know, get an Aperio focus versus a Sakai specific focus and also, um, you know, some topics that might be of interest to, to this group. So I'm curious if people have any opinions on that, and also if you have any ideas for, uh, or yeah, I see Davey said student perspective, absolutely, student perspective would be really cool as well. Um, and Terry writes, is there a appropriate reason you're talking about state authorization issues? Terry, I don't know what that means, so maybe you could elaborate. Um, you know, we might have to do that elaborate offline because we're uh, getting close to the top of the hour, but I'd be very interested in hearing what that means. I see Dave responded to her, so maybe he knows what that means. Only for United States folks, Terry. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so I'm not sure, Jennifer, what your comment means, so I haven't, haven't been following the thread exactly on the chat. How to use o &E for t teaching and learning? Absolutely, Adam. I think that there would be, that would be one of the folks we could definitely um, invite uh, that would be very, I think, get a large turnout here. That would be the open academic environment folks. So I will reach out to them first. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that would be a great one. And I, I personally, what do people, how do people, so we can start with that. Let's start with OAE and get them to, uh, yeah. But I'm also interested, personally, I'm curious about things like that may not be as directly teaching and learning related, it might be more administrative. I'm curious if people have an interest in those things as well, maybe for later. So maybe we can start with more direct teaching and learning ones like OAE. Um, curious if there's what, what you all think about that. And again, with the objective, uh, maybe really pushing this to be more of an Aperio group and to get a broader perspective on what Aperio is like. I think the so OAE, OAE for sure. I think the OAE yeah. people are, are looking for uh, lots of uh, teaching and learning use cases so they can justify adding um, IMS LTI support. So if we can come up with some you know, good use cases and people saying they would use it, that might just make it happen. Cool. I mean, I could see with OAE, yeah, that, that would be a great tie in. And, and um, it might be that they want more than one uh, time slot to present, because maybe part of it's presenting, because maybe not everyone's familiar with OAE yet. I think a lot of us are, but not everybody is, and a lot of us yeah. don't use it, so it's a part of the conception. And then maybe there's another one talking about those use cases, which could really fit in from a perio level discussion as well. So it could serve two purposes, input to the OAE folks, but also, you know, general you know, teaching and learning discussions. So that sounds really super. I like that idea personally. <laughs> Um, okay, well, again, uh, thank you for your input. I see it's a little after 11. I don't want to keep folks. Uh, so if you do have any um, input, feel free, Tricia and or Matt Burgess, uh, Tricia and Matt, University of Virginia folks, and um, uh, or write me directly and let me know suggestions or if you have ideas for presenting. Again, this is intended to be informal and driven by the participants. So you folks are the ones who kind of figure out 
what we want to talk about, and um, and then bring those issues up as you've been doing, which has been you know really super. Um, so I think that's all I've got for right now. Um, does anyone have any final comments they need to make? I see a lot of thank yous going by. Yeah, thank you, everyone. It was really a productive meeting, I thought. And uh, okay, so again, if you have any additional ideas, please you know feel free to email and. Brainstorming is totally okay if you're not sure. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording now and say thank you and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.